Hey folks, Good Guy Glenn here, and today's Friday, August 23rd, 2024. Yeah, I'm here on the job. It's another work week complete. Just running um, loads of soil today. This morning I ran, chopped up asphalt to a place where it gets ground up and recycled. And today, I'm uh, this afternoon, I'm just running loads of soil all day. You get tired, same as OTR. This truck beats you up a lot more than if you're in a semi truck, because the semi truck's got air ride suspension and you're on the uh, interstate for miles and miles and miles. This truck, you're on job sites, every bump, because it's a uh, leaf spring suspension, beats up your kidneys, beats you up, but no complaints. I know where I'm going this afternoon, gonna get something to eat, it's payday. I'm off for the weekend. And that doesn't mean in a truck stop, tied to a truck. It's been a good adventure so far for me. And I'm not really unhappy. I live in New Jersey, so I am looking for a second job. That's just the way of the world. It's a shame that I make what, uh, just 10 years ago, you would say what I was making was good money, but you can't even afford to rent an apartment in New Jersey unless you make, you know, pretty well into the six figures. And that's a shame. You know, and a lot of you say, well, why don't you move? I would love to, but this is where I was offered a job. It is close to my family, to my kids. So here I am. Which leads me to my topic of discussion today, and that is the local job. I know a lot of people, that's the ultimate goal. I'm gonna get that local job. Well, I'm gonna tell you from experience and just from talking to other drivers who are doing the same thing, who either went to Western Express or Warner or one of the other megas to get their experience and looking for a local job. There's a lot of competition for local jobs. There's a lot of people have got their CDL in the last few years, realized that OTR is not the golden ticket that everyone made it seem, especially a lot of YouTubers were painting it. You know, and there were a lot of the YouTubers making six figures, you know, during the pandemic. And those days are over. Freight is still short. Miles are still short. And, and you know, the cent per mile is low dollars per mile if you're an owner operator there's a lot of owner operators hanging it up and honestly i think if you could hold on as an owner operator the market will eventually return to like a stable level it always does these things work in cycles but it's hard to say with the rise of the mega carrier being as big as it is now but i don't really know i don't know how much that's going to affect things but what I but not to get off topic, let's talk about the local job. It's gonna be competition for local jobs. First and foremost, SAP. We know what's going on with the SAP drivers. They are looking to eliminate 140,000 SAP drivers in the next coming weeks. September, I think this starts to go into effect. That's gonna affect a lot of people who are SAP, who are right now currently not they're not registered the proper way. I don't know exactly the ins and outs. I'm not a SAP driver. But from what I understand, after they're done purging that initial group, they're going to start looking at SAP drivers on a case-by-case -case basis, trying to thin the herd. That's one way they're trying to thin the herd. There's apparently too many drivers out there, and they're trying to just, like, eliminate a lot. I think a lot of mega carriers do a good job of that too, putting kids in bad situation, not because kids, but like, you know, when I say kids, I mean new drivers. They put them in bad situations, send them to New York City after they've only been driving two weeks, OTR. They get into wrecks, their careers wrecked and whatnot. But I'm gonna tell you what I can tell you. Some locals don't care about your DAC and others will look at your DAC. If you're lucky and you're in a situation like me and you get a job through who you know, you know, 
then of course there's always a way to get a job. If you have family that runs a trucking company, then there's a chance you're gonna get a job and it's going to be, you know, this doesn't apply to you. But if you don't know anybody and you're out there and you think you're gonna come in, now there's always gonna be the jobs like US Foods. US Foods is always hiring because they beat up their drivers pretty good. You're gonna make great money at US Foods. That's a fact. You could probably bring home close to two Gs a week at US Foods, but you're gonna be handling freight. It's tough freight. You're gonna be backing down alleys. So if you think delivering Poland Springs from Maine into Brooklyn is tough, you don't even know. Even me, I'm driving in some precarious places every day with this truck, but I don't have a 53 foot trailer behind me. So it's not so bad. Attitude, of course, is everything. These smaller companies, these mom and pops, they're not just hiring you strictly on your experience and like, you know, looking for a job. They're looking for a dependable person. You have to ask yourself, are you that dependable person or are you the guy who fights with your DM constantly about trivial nonsense? I'm gonna tell you right now, you are not gonna get a cash advance at a local job. It's not gonna happen. So you drivers who are constantly getting cash advances because you show up to OTR with like 50 cents in your pocket, it's not gonna happen at your local. You're gonna get paid when you get paid and sometimes that's a two week cycle. I get paid weekly, sometimes it's bi-weekly and you're waiting two weeks to get a check and if you don't manage your money right, you're not going to make it. There's a lot of drivers out there there's a lot of people looking for said local job. So it is, just like OTR, driving wages down a bit. Uh, I see some of the money some of these drivers are getting offered to work at some of these smaller companies. And you might as well just stay OTR. You know what I mean? You're not going to make much more. But if you want to be home and you want to, like, I don't know your situation. I don't know where you live. But like where I live in New Jersey, you're probably gonna have to get a second job. It's just the fact of the matter. I've even thought about, good guy Glenn's thinking about getting a job at Spirit Halloween for the season, banking up some of that money, right? Why not? I love Spirit Halloween. I'm in there every week anyway. Might as well work there on the weekend and make some extra cash, right? But we'll see how that goes. I'm half playing, I'm half completely honest. What I am really looking for is a second driving job on the weekend. I've got some leads on that. I have to go out and get my tanker endorsement, which I've put out, put off for a long time. But I do have a hookup with a job that is real busy right now and they might need some overtime drivers. Plus, I could pick up shifts per diem driving some dump truck loads. So for me, for a guy like me that knows a lot of people, I'll find something. But for some people, especially if you live in a more rural area, I don't really know what the situation is where you live. What I do know, what I am seeing from people, you know, I talk to, cause like, you know, I'm always putting the feelers out, do you need another guy? And people will always sometimes say, hey, I'm gonna need someone for the weekend. And we talk about the people they hire and they tell me how many drivers they're going through because they're just not dependable. They just don't show up to work. They just call out of work because of whatever reason. And you just can't do that. In this type of job, you have to be ready to work at any time. So when I say, when I call a place and I say, hey, you got any weekend per diem work? Well, if they call me on Friday and say, show up tomorrow to pick up the truck and run for the weekend, you better be ready to run for the weekend. If you start turning that shit down when they when the phone rings, guess what? They'll just call the guy who's gonna pick up the phone and who's gonna show up and drive out their loads. It's just the way that it is. So keep that in mind. Another thing, and this is more for the Western Express drivers because other companies aren't like Western Express. You smack up a truck in any capacity, you're gonna lose your job. 
That's it. They're not mega carriers. They, you blow a tire because you ran over something, you could lose your job. $600 or $1,000 for a new tire, depending on what tire you hit. It's a lot of money for some of these mom and pop companies. And uh, they're gonna care. Mud flaps, OTR, Western Express, we blow out mud flaps all the time. We stop at Love's, we buy them. A lot of you don't. A lot of you put in DVIRs and wonder why you're sitting all day. Never made sense to me. Just go to Love's, just go to Pilot. Buy the stupid mud flap. It's like 18 bucks. And you're like, well, that, you know, screw that. The company should pay for that. All right. Add up how long it takes your company to send out a DVIR, to put in a DVIR, and how long you're going to sit to have that mud flap. Then add up the miles you didn't drive that day because you were waiting on such DVIR. DVIR. It doesn't add up. The math ain't mathing, and that's just the problem. A lot of y'all are bad at math. And when you're bad at math, you just don't, you know... You don't get your miles for the day or for the week, and you just, uh, that $18 can snowball into hundreds of dollars you didn't make. And then you're sitting with a $300 check and you wonder why. Just go and change the mud flap. Yeah, so there is work out there if you want to do it. It's not going to be like OTR. It's not going to be 100% no touch. There's days where you're going to be doing other things, and... Another thing is pre-trip. Pre-trip is a big deal to mom and pops because mom and pops like to take care of their equipment. I know the company I work with likes to take care of their equipment, okay? So you got to do your pre-trip. You have to keep your truck clean. You have to stay on top of the maintenance. This is what you have to do as a driver. This is what drivers used to do. I know my school where I went to, shout out Smith & Solomon, Lakewood, New Jersey. They taught me how to be a truck driver. They taught me about the maintenance of the vehicle. You know, we learned about slack adjusters, you know, in brake chambers and, you know, what to recognize when you're inspecting them. And I see these people who go to these two week CDL schools and they don't understand nothing. You know, you might blow a turbo boot. You just need to screw tightened. Put the boot back on. You might need a new uh, clamp, hose clamp for it. You put it on, you turn the screw. Ten minutes, you're done and you're back on the road. If you can't be an asset to the company and just get these, do this simple maintenance on a truck, you're probably not going to hold a job. You as a trucker have to know your equipment. You really do. You have to know your equipment. I'm not saying you have to be a diesel mechanic, but if the tr truck breaks down and you have no idea, the lights are just on. Well, that doesn't help. And there are a lot of drivers that are out here. They know their equipment. And since I've been here, I've seen other drivers, you know, that I've stopped on the side of the road to see if they need help and they're diagnosing problems. They're under the truck trying to figure out why they're losing air. If you think you're just going to call it in, maybe your company's like that. Maybe your company doesn't want you to touch anything and they have a road crew. Chances are probably not. They're going to want to know what's wrong with the truck so they can decide how they're going to handle it. If they're going to tow it into the shop, if they're going to send one of their mechanics out and try to fix it on the road. Try to know a thing or two about your equipment. That's all I'm saying about that. Being home local has been awesome for me. There, you know, there's always things that I'm going to miss about OTR. The travel, the friends that I had, you know, some of the funny things that really aren't funny, but hell, I even miss the mountains in West Virginia. If, you know, that makes any sense. Ultimately, I love this job. I love what I'm doing. There is hope. There are jobs out there. Make yourself an asset. If you make yourself an asset, you'll always have work. Remember that. Try to do the best you can every single day. So, you know what I always say to you? Have faith and everything will be all right.
It works out. If you really have faith and if you're driven, things really have a way of working out. So love God, love your family, say your prayers, eat a Greek yogurt and a banana every single day, drink plenty of water, do your pre-trip. That's very important. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell so when I drop another video, you get a notification. And once again, this is Good Guy Glenn. Thanks for watching.